Okay, we're going to um, go over a, um, an example of um, running a uh, two-level uh, HLM model. Um, the data uh, were, were downloaded from uh, this website right here. It's from an article by Goldstein et al. And uh, we're just going to uh, carry out a few analyses and illustrate some of the um, processes involved in HLM. Um, we're going to be using uh, IBM SPSS uh, to go over this as well. So uh, in terms of the data set, you'll notice that we have um, essentially a set of variables um, where uh, basically each row represents a given student. So we have a number of students. Uh, that's, these are the identifiers. Uh, and those students are nested within uh, schools, about 65 of them. So all of these students are nested within uh, school one, these students are nested within school two, and so forth. Um, we have a uh, level one outcome variable, which is uh, exam scores. We have uh, essentially what's going to be a level one predictor, which is uh, which uh, scores on the London reading test, standardized measure, uh, and uh, gender. So uh, coded zero for male, one for female. So um, at any rate, we are going to start this illustration uh, with a random intercept model. Uh, basically, it's a model that has no predictors in it, and all we're going to be doing is testing whether there are significant, whether there is significant variation in um, intercepts across groups. So, um, and basically. Um, the intercept is essentially a, um, a mean for the school on the dependent variable. Um, when we incorporate predictors, the intercept is really nothing more than an adjusted mean. So um, the first step oftentimes when running uh, multi-level analysis uh, is to test a random intercept model, which um, again has no predictors included. And you'll notice that the, um, w you know, we can now talk about uh, the um, the model in terms of two equations. We have a level one, level two equation. The level one equation, you've got the y uh, subscripted ij, and that is basically person i on in group j, um, that person's score on y. Um, we also have, this is the intercept uh, for that person's group. And so, um, you know, we, we don't have a, a mean in here, um, or we don't have a predictor in here, and so this essentially is just the um, unadjusted group mean uh, on the dependent variable. The dependent variable, by the way, was uh, exam score. So this would be the uh, school mean for exam score plus uh, a residual, which is essentially the difference between uh, each uh, individual score uh, within group J and uh, the mean for group J on the dependent variable. Um, so that's basically the level one equation. The level two equation um, is essentially modeling the variation in the intercepts, or in this case, the unadjusted means um, across the groups. And so the uh, intercept is a function of the average of the school means, or school intercepts, uh, plus a deviation between um, a given school's mean and uh, the overall grand mean. So um, you can see then that we could actually create a mixed uh, model where uh, essentially through substitution we could say y subscripted ij is equal to um, gamma plus um, mu subscripted 0j plus um, the residual component. So we're just denoting that in this illustration with uh, R I J. So essentially, that's um, if you're familiar with uh, analysis of variance, you'll notice that this um, should look very familiar. You basically have a grand mean, um, the group effect, which is uh, this right here, and then the deviation of the individual's score on Y from uh, the group from um, uh, his or her respective group mean. So to carry out the analysis, we're going to um, we'll go into SPSS and we'll go to Analyze Mixed Models Linear. We'll move the grouping variable school ID over to the subjects box. Click on Continue. Then we'll move um, exam score, which is our level one outcome variable, over to the dependent box. Under Fixed, we'll leave this click right here, include the intercept, and that's because basically the um, 
the gamma right here is treated as the fixed effect in the model. Um, and then uh, the mu subscripted 0j is essentially uh, capturing the variation of the um, group intercepts or group means around the grand mean. So we're essentially um, going, so this is um, the um, fixed effect and then we're also going to be modeling the variation in, um, in the uh, intercepts across the groups. Um, so to do that, we're going to click on random and we'll click on include intercept and then our grouping variable over. So when we've included the intercept, now this is allowing the uh, mu zero j's to randomly vary and we're going to estimate the variance of those intercepts. You'll notice that um, up here there's a little box for covariance type. Um, and so essentially we only have one uh, ver one um, um, one term that is allowed to randomly vary, that, that being the intercept uh, for the groups. And so, um, so we're only going to be using this uh, right here. Later on, if we are going to model uh, vary, varying uh, slopes and intercepts across level two, uh, then we could also ask for the covariance between those, um, those um, estimates. So at any rate, we're going to click on continue and then under estimation, uh, there are two options in SPSS. There's restrictive, restricted maximum likelihood and maximum likelihood. They often will function uh, very similarly. Um, and uh, for this illustration, we're just going to leave it on restricted maximum likelihood estimation. Um, but if we wanted to later on, you know, let's say we wanted to compare models and so forth and we, and using some of the fit uh, indices that are available, we could uh, we would need to use the maximum likelihood, but we're not really going to do that in this illustration. We're just going to be fitting a few models. Um, under statistics, we'll ask for parameter estimates, test for covariance parameters, and covariances of random effects. Click on continue and then on OK. And so now you can see we've got um, essentially our um, a description of the model. We have a fixed effect or the intercept. So that is the grand mean of the intercept. So that's denoted, that that's our gamma subscripted 0, 0. Random effects we have, um, this is uh, the variance of the mu uh, o 0 j's. Okay, so the variance of those. And then we also have the level 1 variance as well. And so that is uh, the prediction error. And so you know, what we would say variance and because we're using the R uh, to de denote uh, the residual variation at level one, we'll just say R uh, I J. Okay, so there you go. Then you'll notice that we have, um, you know, there's a table for information criteria and this is, you know, this is, this can be useful for uh, making comparisons between models, but it's um, basically not um, supposed to be utilized or is not recommended to be utilized uh, when you are using uh, REML uh, estimation. So um, we're just not really going to focus on that in this uh, particular video. I'm going to scroll down and so now you can see that we have uh, the estimates of fixed effects. We've got this is the gamma subscript 00. zero. That's the estimated mean on uh, exam score. Um, for no predictors of the model. So this is the grand mean on uh, exam score. And then so you can see that there's a significance test associated with this. This really oftentimes is not terribly useful because you'd be essentially testing whether there's a significant difference between the grand mean and, um, and a null mean of zero. And um, so uh, unless you are have some reason to do that, there's not really a whole point uh, in, in going any further. Down here we've got the estimates of covariance parameters and you can see that um, our, our residual, which again that is essentially the sigma squared with the little uh, r subscripted uh, j, that is the variance at level one and then we also have the variance of the intercepts at level two. So that's the variance with, of the uh, mu zero j's that we're talking about. And um, essentially we have a significance test for those uh, variance estimates. Um, the null hypothesis is no variance. Um, and so what we're testing to see is, is there a significant variation uh, at these different levels? And oftentimes that's taken 
um, to indicate um, whether or not uh, we need to add in predictors to account for that variation. We have the Wald Z test um, that is uh, provided, and um, really it's kind of uh, um, in um, a book by Heck and uh, colleagues, they suggested it really, uh, the, the p values that you have right here, you should probably be uh, having that or having those. Um, so um, basically split it in half, uh, but you know, uh, to carry out the test because technically you can have a negative uh, variant. So it doesn't really make much sense to use the Z distribution, the full Z distribution to test that hypothesis out. So you're only really testing in the upper tail and so then it makes sense to split the p-values in half. Uh, given that both of these are statistically significant, that would indicate to us that uh, there's really no need um, to do any splitting. We can just say that the variation uh, in residuals at, at level one are, is uh, significant. The variation in the intercepts at level two um, is significant. So uh, that is um, essentially kind of a walkthrough of the null model. Now let's look at um, Oh, uh, also, uh, you know, another index that you might consider uh, using is the ICC, which is the intraclass correlation coefficient. Oftentimes, it's utilized to determine if there's uh, a need for uh, use, using multi-level modeling. And uh, the basic idea is that if there is significant clustering of um, observations within the higher level units, um, then uh, what that translates into is a higher ICC. Uh, our intraclass correlation uh, coefficient. And so uh, the higher the ICC, the more evidence that there's um, clustering, um, which then would then would would then be used to justify uh, further uh, use of multi-level modeling. Um, I think um, it was an art article by Andrew Hayes. I think he kind of suggested that there was not really um, any, you know, if, if the H if the ICC is near zero, that there's no benefit. He, kind of suggested that that's not really uh, the case, that there are other reasons why you might still use multi-level modeling even um, if the IC ICC were close to zero. But at any rate, uh, the ICC is just computed by taking a ratio of the between group variation, that is the um, variation in the intercepts that you see right here, uh, to the sum of the variance at level one and at level two, so the within and between variation. And so in this case, we end up with an ICC of 0.16, uh, which suggests then that we have about 16% of the variation um, occurring between uh, level two units, um, which is actually uh, on the high side, which um, oftentimes would be taken to indicate that yes, indeed, we, we should pursue uh, using multi-level modeling. Um, okay, so another uh, example. Um, we are now going to include a random intercept plus a fixed level one predictor. So we're essentially going to build off of the previous model, um, which um, incorporated this, um, uh, you know, essentially the fixed effect or the grand mean for the intercepts plus um, the, um, the residual for the intercepts or the deviation between uh, a given group's intercept and the grand mean. And we're also going to add in a level um, the, the level two predictor, or excuse me, a level one predictor. And this is basically gamma one, gamma subscript to one zero. And this is reflecting the notion that we're, we're gonna have a fixed effect. So uh, through substitution, and what I mean by that is, is that the, um, the slope for the predictor is gonna be estimated as the same across the groups. So here through substitution, you can see that um, we've got essentially uh, this part of the model is reflecting uh, this component. Uh, then we've got the fixed effect for uh, the predictor variable times xij plus a residual at level one. So um, substituting, we're going to use the London reading test as um, as our level one predictor. So we've got the so I've kind of changed this to reflect London reading test for the slope and um, and then the uh, x variable. So um, in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to go under Analyze Mixed Models Linear. 
And we're, we're now going to move uh, the London reading test over to the covariates box um, and click on fix and we'll move this over to uh, the model box. Click on continue. The estimation uh, is going to be exactly the same as before. Under random, we're leaving this alone. If we wanted to allow the slopes to vary, we would move this over, but we're not going to do that. We're, gonna, we're only uh, modeling a fixed effect for the slope. And so because of that, we, we'll leave the variance component button um, clicked as well. So now when we click on OK, you can see that we have our um, output. You can see that we've got the fixed effect for the intercept, uh, fixed effect for uh, the, um, the slope. So these are fixed um, effects across groups. We've got, we're allowing the, uh, the intercepts to randomly vary as well. Um, so uh, when we are modeling the variance of those intercepts, uh, this is it right here. And remember that now we've added in the level one predictor. So the intercepts are basically uh, uh, the group means adjusted for the presence of the covariate in the model. Uh, you'll notice that we have the residual. So this is the level one residual. So we're, we're model we're, uh, the parameters being estimated here are, are the variances that we talked about um, a few minutes ago. So scrolling down, we see that we have um, in the model, this is the um, the, the, the grand mean for exam score. So, and so this is the predicted uh, exam score when um, your predictors in the model are equal to zero. Um, and so, you know, this can be uh, easily interpretable or more interpretable when you have um, a, a predictor in the model where there's a meaningful zero point. Um, so at any rate, um, this, that's kind of an FYI. Like I said, we don't typically uh, worry about testing the difference between the, um, the, the fixed effect for the, um, the intercepts and um, basically testing whether it's uh, significantly different from zero unless there's some reason to. Um, so the slope for the London reading test is 0.563. So in other words, uh, and like I said, this, is, this was denoted in our model as the gamma one zero. And so that's the fixed effect. And we're estimating this to be the slope um, across the groups because we're not modeling any kind of random component here. We're only fixing the slope uh, to be equal across the groups. So because of that, we're, we're essentially um, saying that you know for every one uh, raw score unit increase on uh, London reading tests, there's a predicted increase of 0.563 units on, um, on exam score. Is this statistically significant? We have a t-test that's presented right here. Uh, in order to test that um, hypothesis, uh, test um, our data against the null hypothesis, the null being that there's no relationship or no predictive relationship. So we would infer that there is a, a significant predictive relationship between uh, London reading test scores and exam scores. When we look at the residuals at level one, so I'll just denote this as the RIJ right here are the variance of the residuals. This is the variance estimate and we are down here we've got the variance of the um, of the intercepts so that's the mu zero j's. So those are our variance estimates and we can see that both of them each of these are statistically significant suggesting that there are predictors that may still be added to the model that may explain variation uh, in um, uh, mass scores at or excuse me, exam scores at uh, the two levels.